All right, I just solved another annoying Gentoo issue that I was having. This time, it's getting sound working on my crappy HP laptop. I never quite knew how annoyed that I could be until the most crappy piece of hardware that I own joined forces with a Linux distro that I have a bit of a dysfunctional love-hate relationship with, to put it lightly. But after recompiling my kernel more times than I want to remember, and as I'm sure you can tell from my NeoFetch output here that compile times on my kernel were definitely not the fastest, but I finally got this stuff working. And I also think that this is my first Gentoo video that I've made inside of hardware instead of VirtualBox. I know a few of you have commented that I've been making Gentoo videos in VirtualBox and you know some things are different in VirtualBox than they are on hardware. Right now I've got it running on this HP laptop, probably gonna have it running on my desktop once I have enough time to get everything working. Um, but yeah, this is what we're dealing with now. Um, Hopefully this OBS recording comes out good too, because my laptop can barely handle OBS. I mean, this is what you get with a laptop that cost about $300 at Best Buy three years ago. Specs aren't great, but hey, it's what I got. Anyway, enough with airing my frustrations. Let me show you how to conquer this sound problem in Gentoo. So the first thing to figure out is what kind of PCI devices do we actually have? It's not enough to simply enable the Intel PCI devices in our kernel, at least not with the one that I have here. Um, Cause you know, I do have an Intel CPU, but we have to dig deeper to figure out specifically what type of Intel devices I really have on my machine. So run an LC, I mean, LS PCI hyphen K, and then this is going to give us the full output of what our PCI devices are. So if I come over here to audio device, you can see that I'm using an Intel Corporation device, but specifically it's a Sunrise Point LP HD audio, blah, blah, blah. All right, so let's, um, let's become root first and go to, our Linux directory where we keep our kernel config. Then let's do a make menu config. All right, so normally, and just like how I showed you guys, I think in um, the sound, how to get sound in VirtualBox, normally what you would do is you would go to device drivers and um, I think it's called sound card. Yep, sound card support. And then you would go into ELSA, Advanced Linux Sound Architecture. And then you would go to PCI Sound Devices and you would just go ahead and um, either build it directly into your kernel or you could build it as a module like I did here. Um, normally, this is the one that you would build in. But because we have the sunrise point, there's a couple extra steps that we have to take. So when you have um, the sunrise point um, devices, what you first need to do, so we're in device drivers, that's the uh, sub menu we're in. Um, actually, I should probably just do it from the beginning because I know it can get kind of confusing looking at this with the sub menu. So we're in the main menu, go to device drivers, and then we want to go to, um, I just saw it, I think it's down a little bit more. Just saw it. I must have scrolled past it though. Ah, here we go. If it was a snake, it would have bit me. All right, so pin controllers. You need to enable this. By default, it's not going to be enabled, so go ahead and enable it, and then you'll get the sub menu that opens up. So then go into this sub menu, and then this is what you need to enable. So Again, if you have a uh, if you have these, um, 
me make it bigger so you guys can see. If you have these sunrise point devices, then that's what you're going to have to enable. If you have something different, then, you know, as long as it's in here, then, um, ah, crap, gotta go back to it. So if you have any of these other ones, like if you're using the uh, Intel Ice Lake or uh, Gemini or you know Cedar Fork, Cannon Lake, whatever Intel card you have, you have to go ahead and enable that as well. Then you can go ahead and rebuild your kernel. Um, I'm not gonna do the kernel rebuild because I know that I'm gonna drop frames in my video and I care more about the video quality than I do uh, rebuilding the kernel. I've showed you guys how to build a kernel enough times, so you should probably know how to do it by now. But yeah, there you go. Do that. Um, then of course, uh, you know, mount it to boot before you build it and everything like that. That way you actually load the correct kernel when you reboot up. And then you will have sound working on your system. Uh, you could do Elsa Mixer to go ahead and mess with it. Uh, so if you're getting like um, this command is not found or whatever type of error that bash outs put outputs when you try to run Elsa Mixer, this is gonna fix it. So then you'll actually be able to open it and you'll be able to uh, set your sound up. So that's it for this one, guys. Short video, but you know what? I go through this frustration in Gen 2 so that you guys don't have to. So because I've put in such a valiant effort, I hope that you like the video. I hope that you share it with other people who want to go on this Gen 2 journey so that they hopefully don't quit out of some random sound frustration like so many people who try Gen 2 do. And uh, be sure to subscribe so that you know when more videos, Gen 2 related or not, are coming out. Peace out, guys.